Hi there, I'm Nick Saldivar and I'm an elementary theater teacher in Sarasota, Florida. In this lesson, we're going to be doing a narrative pantomime to the book, Roshanka's Eggs. When I explain the art of pantomime to my students, I always talk to them about doing something when an object is not actually there. Here are some examples. Or, or, you might have guessed that I was painting a painting or making a snowball or sipping a hot cup of tea. A narrative pantomime is just a pantomime that follows along a particular story. It could be a story that you've made up for your students, or it could be from a book. Theater is a really powerful art form for exploring all of those social emotional skills. In this narrative pantomime, we're going to shift between two different perspectives. We're going to be playing the part of Babushka, and we're also going to be playing the part of the goose, Roshenka. I like to do this with my students to get them to start to understand how somebody else might perceive their actions. Before we hop into our pantomime, we're going to start by reading the book. Here we go. Roshenka's Eggs by Patricia Polacco. Each day, Babushka would take the shell of an egg from her basket and paint it in wonderful design, using the shapes of stars and flowers, triangles and circles. Through the long, cold winter, Babushka painted. Then, one day after a snowstorm, Babushka went outside. She could still hear the faint sound of snow falling. It was a sound like soft rain. Herds of caribou came to feed at Babushka's because the grasses they usually ate were covered with snow. A miracle, she whispered as she fed them. These wild things have found their way to me. Just then, a flock of noisy geese honked loudly overhead. As they glided over the snow, one of them faltered and fell from the sky. Babushka went to where the goose lay crumpled in the snow. A hunter did this. Babushka grumbled. She carefully picked up the goose and took it back to her little house. There, she fed the little goose from her own table and put the goose in her best lined basket with the warmest quilt from her own bed. I shall give you a good name, one that we both can like, eh, my little friend? She said as she patted the goose's head. How do you like Roshenka? Yes? Then Roshenka it shall be. With Babushka's care, Roshenka grew strong as each day passed. To repay her kindness, Roshenka laid an egg for breakfast every morning. As Roshenka got better, she waddled around the little house, exploring every nook, cupboard, and corner. One day, she jumped on top of Babushka's work table, overturning the jars of brightly colored paint that she used to color the eggs. Yet, Babushka screamed as she chased the goose with a broom. No! The frightened goose flapped her wings to get away and knocked over the basket of eggs that Babushka had so lovingly painted. The eggs crashed onto the floor and shattered into millions of pieces. They were both very sad. There was no reason for Babushka to go to the festival. The next morning, Babushka slowly got out of bed and trundled over to Roshenka's basket to get her morning egg. But when she reached into the middle of the quilt, she picked out the most brilliantly colored egg that she'd ever seen. A miracle, Babushka whispered. A miracle! She made small holes at both ends of the eggs and blew the yolk and white into a dish to cook and eat later for breakfast. Then she held up the egg in the morning light and marveled at its beauty. After that, every morning for twelve mornings, there was another egg, each more beautiful than the one laid the day before. Soon, Babushka had enough eggs to take to the festival in Moscow. How wonderful, she thought. A miracle has replaced the eggs that were broken. Spring is here, my little friend, Babushka said to Roshenka the morning of the festival. Soon now you will be flying off to the north with your flock. She bustled to the hearth fire and brewed some of her most favored tea. She shared a saucer of tea with Kulish, a sweet Easter bread. She covered each piece with poshka, a spread of cheese, butter, and raisins. They savored each bit together. One for you, one for me, Babushka chanted. Da, 
da, my little friend. I shall sorely miss you, but you are a wild thing, and a miracle sent you to me. It would not be right to ask you to stay with me forever. When Babushka left her little house, she took one last look at Roshenka sitting on the doorstep. She waved, then took determined steps to Moskva with the basket of her precious eggs. She crossed Levitov Valley where the caribou mothers were walking their newborn calves. A miracle, she thought. New little lives. A miracle. She crossed the bridge over the Moskva River, and soon she could see the onion domes of old Moskva. The festival was bright and exciting. There were goat carts selling kulich, processions, dancers, jugglers, and laughing children playing and running. Babushka showed her old friends the eggs. Her eggs are the most beautiful in all Russia, they thought. Look at them, the elders said. They almost glow, as if the paint is a part of the shell itself. The judges picked Babushka's eggs as the most beautiful. Babushka was so happy, she beamed as she looked at the first prize, a feather bed quilt. As Babushka made her way homeward, a honking flock of geese flew overhead. Babushka gave them a long, lingering look. She wondered if Roshenka was one of them. When Babushka arrived at her home that evening, Roshenka was gone. Alone, she put the new quilt on her little bed. She brewed a cup of tea, ate the last of the Kulich and Bashka, got into bed with her favorite book of poems, and drifted off to sleep. She hadn't noticed Roshenka's basket. But that night, Babushka was awakened from a sound sleep by an ever so small sound. It was coming from Roshenka's basket. She hobbled closer and saw a glorious egg. But this one was different from all the others. It quivered and moved. It made tiny muffled sounds. The egg jumped, bumped, rolled, and pitched in the basket. Then there was a crack, and Babushka could see the very special gift that Roshenka had left for her. All a miracle, Babushka said. And this little goose remained with Babushka always. Now that we've finished reading the book, we're going to move over to my living room where we're going to start to go and move around a little bit more. Make sure you're safe. Make sure there's not anything that's going to bump arms and elbows. And if you're doing this at home, you might see my little friend Henry, my dog, is there. If there's people around, don't let them distract you. Just keep your focus. Find yourself seated in a comfortable position. And if you haven't already, go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. As you open your eyes, I want you to imagine you're in a very cold place. It's winter time. And you're now a very old lady. So some things might be a little harder for you now. It might take you a little bit longer to do things. As you start your morning, we're going to paint Babushka's eggs. Pick an egg up in your hand. And I want you to paint a line from the bottom of the egg to the top. And then put another line from the bottom to the top. And between those two little lines that you've drawn, you to draw four little circles. One, two, three, four. Turn your egg and draw one more line from the bottom to the top. Now we're going to draw a triangle. One, two, three, four. Turn your egg one more time and draw a line from the bottom to the top. Now 
now we're going to do stars. A little more difficult, be careful. One, two, three, four. One last time, turn that egg, draw a line from the bottom to the top. And this time you're just going to draw one flower. The petals, the stem, maybe your flower has a couple leaves. Take a look at your beautiful egg. Place it down gently to dry. As Babushka finishes her work, she stretches her arms and walks out the door for a break. She sees the caribou, who kind of look like reindeer. She turns and looks at the sky to see a flock of geese flying by and <gasps> one of them fell from the sky. She leans down, picks it up, and takes it back inside so she can nurse it back to health. She gently lays the goose on the table. She looks for a basket. She finds some cozy blankets so it'll be warm. She gently places the goose into the basket and takes some bandages to wrap up the bird's wings. Careful, not too tight. She takes the other wing, wraps the wing with bandages. When she's finished, she gently pets the goose, hoping it will be okay. Find yourself back into a seated position in five, Four, three, two, one. Go ahead and close your eyes if you haven't already. In a moment, you're going to open your eyes, but when you open your eyes, you won't be Babushka anymore. You're going to be Roshenka, the goose. You might move like a bird, or you might use your hands like a person. Either one is okay. As you open your eyes, many weeks have passed, and your wings are feeling much better. Go ahead and give them a nice stretch. Stretch the other one. You're almost feeling back to normal. You start to get up from your basket, shake out all your feathers, and you start to take a couple steps, and you trip. Not quite back to normal yet. You try it one more time. Ah! Now I'm starting to remember how I walk. What about flying? You stretch out your wings and start to flap, 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 flap. Oh, not ready to fly yet. What's Babushka doing? Oh my gosh, maybe you can help her paint. So you go over to the table and you start trying to grab the paint and the paintbrushes, but you don't have fingers. So everything starts falling all over the place and Babushka's yelling. Oh no. You ruined it. You broke the eggs. Oh. How is she ever going to forgive you? Start to find yourself back in a place of sitting. If you haven't already, go ahead and start to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. When you open your eyes this time, you're going to go back to being Babushka. 
It's the next morning, and she's very worried. She goes over to the kitchen and starts to make her tea. How is she ever going to replace those eggs? And as she turns around, she looks at the basket. It's the most beautiful egg you've ever seen. You walk over, you pick it up. You turn to Rashinka and smile. She gave you a gift. You give her a soft pet down her back. And together you guys can fix this. Find yourself back in that place of seating. Go ahead and close your eyes. Take that breath in. Let it out. When you open your eyes this time, you're going to be Roshenka. Many weeks have passed. The winter is gone. Spring is here. And it's time for the festival. As you awaken, you start to shake your feathers. And you've got one last gift for Babushka. Take that really special egg. You want to make sure it looks nice, so give it a nice polish. Rub it all the way around. Place it down gently in the basket. Cover it up so she doesn't see it. And you waddle over to Papushka to have some breakfast. One for her, one for you, one for her, one for you. As Babushka grabs the basket of all the eggs you left for her, you follow her outside. You know this is the last time you're going to see her. How are you feeling? Are you sad? Are you happy? As you wave goodbye to Babushka, you know it's time to go. You stretch out your wings and you start to flap, flap, flap. And as your feet leave the ground, you start to soar back into the sky and you fly toward the sun. Find yourself back in a place of sitting. Take that breath in. Let it out. When you open your eyes, this one last time, you're going to be Babushka. The festival is over, and she's come home with her prized quilt. She looks around for Rashenka. She's gone. How do you feel? Are you sad that she's gone? Are you happy that she's back in the sky? Maybe both. She starts to go and prepare her tea. Pours herself a nice big cup. She sits down with her book and she starts to read. As she's reading, she starts to hear something shake from Roshenka's basket. She walks over to the basket and hears more shaking and rustling, and suddenly she sees it. A little goose. She picks it up gently in her hands. Pets its soft little head. 
and she knows Roshenka will be with her always. Go ahead and find yourself back in a place of sitting. Close your eyes. Take that breath in. Let it out. When you open your eyes, you'll be back in your world. Now that we've finished the narrative pantomime, I find it essential to have the students reflect on the experience they just had. You could have them write it down, or you could just have them turn and talk to a partner. Either way, here are some reflection questions that I came up with for the experience. I hope you enjoyed exploring Rishenka's eggs with me. For more bite-sized lessons and virtual experiences, visit embracingourdifferences.org.